relative isotopic mass. Okay, just as a reminder, an isotope are atoms of the same element which have different numbers of neutrons. Remember, they have the same amount of protons, so they've got the same atomic number, but they will have a different mass number. So if we have a look here at two examples, there's two isotopes here of chlorine. So you've got chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Notice the atomic number for both is still 17, but the difference between the two is that chlorine 37 has 20 neutrons, whereas chlorine 35 only has 18 neutrons. Atoms are very, very, very small. Okay, and I love this diagram here, which says that if every person was the size of an atom, the entire human race would fit on the head of a pin and there'd be room left for billions more people. That's how small atoms are. Because they are so small, they have a very small mass. Carbon's mass is 2 times 10 to the negative 23 grams. That is 0, 0. 0.0000, all of those zeros, 2, 3 grams. It's tiny, really tiny. This creates a problem for chemists because it's difficult to measure and also it's difficult to use in calculations. So chemists have come up with a solution for that. We don't need to know an element's exact mass, but what we do need to know is the mass relative to other elements. This is where we've come up with relative isotopic mass. Relative to other atoms, what is the isotopic mass of the isotope? So relative isotopic mass is the mass of one atom of that isotope, which is relative to the mass of one atom of carbon-12. And one, or the mass of one atom of carbon-12 is given the amount of 12 units. So that isotope of carbon is given the mass of 12 units exactly. So let's have a look at this diagrammatically. Here I've given you carbon, one carbon atom, and we'll say that that's carbon-12. So carbon-12, its actual mass is this 0, 0.0000, so 2 by 10 to the negative 23 grams. But instead, we've said that it's got a relative isotopic mass of 12 units. Okay, let's have a look at these here, and these are hydrogen atoms. To find the equivalent weight to one carbon atom, we need 12 hydrogen atoms to have the exact same weight. So we can now work out a mass of hydrogen relative to carbon-12. So hydrogen, which actually has a mass of this, is equal to 1 12th because there's 12 of these equivalent to one carbon. So it's got a relative isotopic mass of one unit. Let's have a look at a second example. So here I've taken one sodium atom and it's got the equivalent mass of two carbon atoms. Now, we know that one sodium atom is equivalent to two carbon atoms and we know that carbon-12 has a relative isotopic mass of 12 units. So therefore, the mass of one sodium is double the size. So sodium will have a relative isotopic mass of 24 units. So we can now look at this relative mass of these different atoms. So lithium, we'll work out number of protons, number of neutrons, number of protons and neutrons. And if we look at the mass, which is obviously the number or the mass number or the number of protons and neutrons, it'll be 7 divided by 12 times 12, which is 7. And that's the mass of an atom relative to carbon-12. With carbon, obviously that's going to work out to 12 because carbon-12 equals 12. Everything else is relative to carbon-12. So, isotopic composition of some common elements, and this is taken from your textbook, and you'll see here that different isotopes have different isotopic masses, and it depends on how many neutrons they've got. But these figures here are worked out based on carbon-12 having exactly a mass of 12. 
everything else has been calculated relative to carbon-12's mass.